Welcome back, guys, to another Friday Gamer Log. As usual, I'll be talking about the games that I've been playing, games that will be coming up here in the direct future for YouTube, and any games I would like to buy or have bought. So, without further ado, let's get this thing started. Alright, as far as Animal Crossing City Folk is concerned, uh, I haven't really been doing anything new, more of the same old, same old. I've just been uh, getting on for maybe 15-20 minutes a day just doing the daily stuff. Things like uh, getting the money rock and checking the Able Sister store and nooks to see if there are any items that I don't have in my catalog yet. Uh, since I've completed the museum and everything, I don't really have anything to do there. But if I find fossils, I'll have them checked and I'll sell them for some pretty good cash. But uh, pretty much just the same old, same old for Animal Crossing. About the only uh, thing to note uh, here is I played it with my friend Seth a little bit. I had a few things to give him for his catalog. And uh, I had... Uh, one of the cats in my town, he had one of the cats in his town, the mother and daughter pair, Katie and Caitlin. And uh, he brought the daughter over to my town and we reunited them. We're still waiting to get the item, but we'll get it eventually. As far as uh, the run of Mother 1 slash Earthbound Zero is concerned, I, I leveled up for a little while on Mount Detoy, right outside the healer's house. I wasn't quite sure uh, how high I'd have to level up. I feel like I got kind of overpowered, though. Whatever the case, though, I did a little bit of leveling up, and then whenever I was ready to move on, I entered that whirlpool and wound up in this uh, little underwater base sort of area. In this little base, I found a robot named Eve, which apparently uh, Nintendo's great-grandfather created and left behind to help out uh, Nintendo. So, uh, we got Eve, he joined the party, and right after that, uh, all the glass started cracking, and we got uh, shot out of this little underground base. We washed back up at the top of Mount Etoy. With Eve in the party, all the enemies became really, really easy. Eve is a really powerful uh, party member to have. You can't actually control him or anything, but he's still nice to have around. Eventually, we came up to the R7038XX, and uh, it destroyed Eve, but Eve exploded and took it out at the last minute. Then we checked the wreckage of Eve, and we got another melody. Then from there, of course, Eve was gone for good, which kind of sucks, but uh, I made a little bit more progress and came up to this uh, gravestone with two X's on it. That's whenever we got a little message right here. After all the talking was done, uh, we got yet another melody, which was the final of the eight melodies that I needed. And right after I got that final melody, I went ahead and used the onyx hook and went back to Magicant. Once I got back to Magicant, I went straight to uh, the castle and everything and met back up with Queen Mary. Queen Mary asked us to uh, sing her the song that we got all the melodies to, so we did. I think that it's a pretty nice song. The song started playing again right after that. After that, Queen Mary started talking about uh, the final boss of the game, Giuga, something like that. So it's a weird name. I don't really care how it's pronounced. But uh, she started mentioning him. Said that she raised him uh, like her own child, but he hated it whenever she'd sing uh, melodies to him, which is obviously kind of a hint as to what you had to do in the final battle. Once all that was done, uh, it was revealed that Queen Mary was actually the uh, great-grandmother of Nintendo, which is, uh, kind of interesting. After that, uh, Magicant was no more as it was just a mirage born of Maria's consciousness. So, Magicant faded away and everything. I thought that that was really cool how, uh, Queen Mary was actually Nintendo's great-grandmother. 
I entered the cave right behind that tombstone and came up to this room with a bunch of captured people, but there really wasn't anything to do in there. I thought that was kind of cool that somebody recognized Anna, though. I made my ways a little deeper into the cave, and that's whenever I came up to the big mothership and everything. That's when the final battle of the game started. The final battle of the game was really easy. It might be because I was over-leveled or whatever. I think that I kind of over-leveled. This was only my second run through Mother 1 slash Earthbound 0, so I wasn't quite sure how high-leveled I'd need to be for the final boss of the game. Pretty much the first eight turns of the fight were all story and everything. It was all scripted out. You just had to survive it. Then after that, you had to sing to the final boss 11 times, then the battle's over. Kind of an interesting way to fight the final boss, in my opinion. Overall, it was just a really easy fight. Not much to it. I pretty much just casted a defense up on everybody, a PK shield on everybody, and then from there I had a everybody guard through the first eight turns and then after that I had everybody sing and occasionally I'd have Anna use a life up Omega to heal everybody. So yeah, the team stayed up in health pretty easily and uh, we, we took out the final boss without much trouble at all. Again, most likely because I was a little bit over leveled, but uh, hey, I'll remember in the future that I won't need to level up so much. Which will be nice because it won't take as long and everything. So with all that said and done, the run of uh, Mother 1 slash Earthbound 0 has now been concluded and everything. I gotta say this is probably my least favorite of the Earthbound games, but that's not saying much because I love this game. It's a really, really good game. I love the entire Earthbound series a lot. It's one of my favorites. I like the ending. I thought that it was really sweet to how uh, Anna and her mom met back up on uh, Mount Etoy. How they got reunited and everything. I thought that it was really cool that you get to see what all the characters are up to. Teddy's now singing daily at the live show, which is kind of funny to see him doing that. I like that little jump that he does at the end right there. Kind of funny. All the kids that were alone in Youngtown got their moms and dads back, so that's good. Then uh, Lloyd uh, started getting along with the people at his school and everything, finally. Anna said her goodbye to the boys. Kind of sad. Kind of like how the house is also white. Kind of blends in with the snow and everything. Lloyd uh, went back to school and everything. All the kids were cheering him, tossing him up into the air. It's good that he's getting along with everybody now. I always liked Lloyd, even though he's not the most powerful character. I always really liked him for some reason. Then, of course, Ness went back home. Or not Ness, but Nintendo went back home and... Uh, Met back up with his mom and two sisters and his dog, I suppose. Yeah, Anna got a letter from Nintendo, made her happy and everything. Nintendo decided to lay down for a second at his house and he fell asleep. The cast of characters in this game isn't quite as long as it is in the Super Nintendo, Earthbound, or uh, Earthbound 2 slash Mother 3, but uh, that's to be expected as this was just an NES game. Still, though, I like that they still had a cast of credits in this game as well. But like I said, overall, I really enjoyed this run, and I look forward to doing more runs of it in the future. Let's see how many of these characters I can remember. That was Pippi. Of course I remember her. Alright, uh, I don't really remember that person. Seems like a random townsfolk. Uh, a couple of the canaries and the miracle healer. What's next? Let's see, uh, the janitor from Lloyd's school. Yeah, I remember quite a few of the characters. The kids from Youngtown, I'm guessing, anyway. Either that or they're just random generic kids. The mayor and the assistant. I never did get the hint from the assistant later on in the game at uh, Spook Ain't, Spooky Ann, or whatever. That just looked like one of the guards that blocks your way on the bridge. Uh, they just look like generic townsfolk to me. Let's see who these guys are. More generic townsfolks? Maybe from a different town or something? Not quite sure. The doctor that lives at the bottom of Mount uh, Etoy, right outside Etoy Cave and everything. The doctor and nurse from, uh, well, pretty much all the hospitals and everything, of course. That just looks kind of like Anna without her hat on. I'm not sure who that was. Alright, the pilot that let us use his tank, then we had to pay him later on. Of course, I remember him. <laughs> I, I like that, how there's just a random penguin within the monkeys there. 
the boy and girls from uh, Magicant. I actually never noticed that, that that those were supposed to be boys and girls until I seen the cast of credits and seen them next to each other. Not quite sure who that is. Looks like a guy who might be holding on to stuff for you if you find him around. The flying men from Magicant and everything. I actually only used one flying man, I think. Queen Mary, a.k.a. Uh, Maria. Alright, the entire gang. I like all the party members. One thing that I really wish that uh, was improved on in the first mother is uh, being able to have all four party members in your team at once instead of just three. Oh well, though, it's just the first game in the series, so I'll let it slide, I suppose. Like I said, though, it was nice to do another run through this game. Uh, this game kind of suffers from a lot of the things that uh, a lot of the early NES uh, RPGs suffered from. Uh, practically needing a guide to find out where you need to go. I suppose if I would have talked around more, I could have found stuff out for myself, but I don't know. I, I used a guide through a lot of it to help me figure out where I had to go. But that was part of the charm in the early uh, 90s RPGs and stuff like that was finding your own way around stuff. I like the camo of uh, Nintendo's dad here. It's nice that you actually get to see him. Kind of, anyway. You only get to see his back, but it's nice that you get to see somewhat of what he looks like. He always looked a little bit chubby to me for some reason or another. As far as the all-color mage run of Final Fantasy V is concerned, uh, I made a little bit more progress. I went to the Phantom Village, southwest of the Fort Tower in Crescent uh, Town. And I got uh, some more magic, more black and white magic, and I also got the Mighty Guard spell from the Sting Rays for uh, Ferris, the Blue Mage. After that, I entered the Fork Tower and I split the team into two different groups, one to take on the magical side and one to take on the physical side of the tower. I sent the Red and Blue Mages, uh, Bards and Ferris, up the physical side since they had better armor. And I sent uh, Krill and Lynn up the other side for the magical side since they were the White and Black Mages. We had to split up in order to take both magics at once here at this tower, otherwise the tower would explode, so we had to do everything just right. My strategy for the boss uh, that guarded the spell of Holy was to put uh, Bards and Ferris in the back in the back row because they'd take less damage and they already had pretty good armor as it is. The way how this battle worked is you weren't allowed to cast any magic at all. You could look at your magic menu, but you couldn't cast any of your spells. Luckily, we could still shatter rods, though, and that's what I did uh, for the entire match. Whenever I needed to heal, I would just use high potions. Being mages, we don't exactly have a whole lot of HP, so just a couple of high potions was good enough to fully replenish all of our HP. So yeah, like I said, I just uh, shattered a whole bunch of different rods to cast the uh, third elemental spells on the, on the Minotaur. I really like how the battle ends. He kind of tries to psych you out. He kind of plays around with you. I really like that. It kind of cracks me up. He tries to use holy magic on you, but uh, he doesn't quite have enough uh, MP to do it. Kind of funny. Whenever I seen that, I'm like, oh god. And then he didn't have MP, and I'm like, oh yeah. Kind of funny. Would have been kind of nice to have been able to use the holy magic in the next boss battle, but I understand why they didn't let you do it. As soon as the battle against the Minotaur ended, I fought a wizard. The way how this battle works is that you could attack this boss with physical attacks, but if you did, he'd cast a return and start the entire battle all over again. So you were only able to use magical spells to harm the boss here. So what I did was I had uh, Krill use all of her most powerful black magics on the boss, and I had Lena cast Shell and Reflect on the entire team. Doing that uh, kept the team well protected, and I healed up with high potions. Like I said before, since we're mages, we don't have a whole lot of HP, so it only took a couple of high potions to finish off uh, healing and everything on our warriors. But yeah, this boss didn't take a whole lot to take out. It wound up casting a flare at the last minute, and it just got reflected off of me and back onto the boss and killed him off. So that was kind of funny. I like the ending to this battle. It was nice to have all black and white magics at last. I also have all blue magics except for one. I'm not quite sure if I can get the last blue magic spell that I'm missing, 1,000 needles. I know you, that you can get it from a monster in the ancient base and everything, but you can only get it if you control it and tell it to use it on you. I tried to confuse it to make it use it on me, but it never happened, so... I'm not quite sure if I can get the 1,000 needles blue magic spell. 
We'll see what happens. I know there's a boss later that casts all blue magic, so I might be able to learn it from him at that point. After I got the final black and white magics, the tower disappeared and uh, the way to the base where Sid and Mid were uh, was opened back up, so I flew down there and met back up with Sid and Mid. They said that they uh, learned how to do a couple more things to the airship, so they programmed it to be a submarine, so they went to work with that. Sid and, or not Sid, but uh, Mid and Krill had a little touching scene where they were talking about their grandpas and everything, which was kind of cute, I suppose. Once Sid and Mid were done upgrading the uh, airship to become a submarine, I dove down into deep waters and went to my next area to get the next tablet. Of course, once I got here, there were a couple of gargoyles in the way. I took them out the same way that you gotta take out, take out, take out all the gargoyles. Can hardly talk. Wow. But uh, they went down really easily. I destroyed both of them without any problems at all. And uh, I entered the little cave-like area under the water here. I eventually came up to a little small town with some dwarves, which was pretty cool to see some dwarves. I wasn't so sure I'd see any here in Final Fantasy V, I didn't remember any, but it was nice to see them and everything. I passed through the dwarven village and made my way even further into this cave, which is whenever I came up to the third tablet and got attacked by these three pigs. These three pigs remind me of the, of the Magus sisters from Final Fantasy IV. The main difference, though, is that you have to defeat the three pigs all at once, otherwise they'll keep reviving each other. Which was kind of annoying, but, uh, oh well. We took them out without too much, without too much trouble. I finished off the battle by shattering a few thunder rods, and that wound up taking them all out at once. Overall, they weren't too bad. They could be kind of annoying, but, uh, so long as you just keep track of how much HP each of them has, then it's not too bad. I got the third tablet, and uh, I also unlocked the spell of Meteor, which is useless to me considering that I don't have a Time Mage, and only Time Mages can cast that spell. After that, I uh, headed towards getting the fourth tablet, which is again whenever I fought a couple more gargoyles, and again I took them out the same as I do all the others. Just got to defeat them both at once. They weren't too much trouble at all, and once I defeated them, the way to the next tablet was opened up. I made my way through a big maze of waterfalls and everything, and made my way deeper into this cave. Which is whenever I finally got the fourth tablet and everything. I still hadn't went and got my uh, next legendary weapons just yet. I went straight from the third tablet to the fourth tablet because I can't really use any more of the ancient weapons. But uh, after I got the fourth tablet, uh, an enemy showed up and tried to attack us, but before he could do anything, Leviathan showed up and took him out. Then a boss battle against Leviathan started up, which uh, Leviathan was a lot, lot easier than what I was expecting. I was expecting it to be a pretty difficult battle, but uh, I guess I just wasn't thinking about how Krill can constantly cast uh, Thundaga and Lena had Holy, and then I just had uh, Barts and Bears shatter Thunder Rods for Thundaga. So triple Thundagas along with Holy took out Leviathan really, really quickly. Levi Leviathan was really, really easy for me. He didn't put up hardly any trouble at all, and if he ever did anything that did weaken us, I had two mages that could heal us up. So like I said, very, very easy battle. He didn't last hardly at all. And of course, having Mighty Guard with uh, the blue mage didn't hurt at all either. Kinda like the animation for Holy, especially whenever it finally lands and you see the light go up. Pretty cool. Once we destroyed Leviathan, he joined the team, which, just like Meteor, is uh, pretty pointless for us, considering that we don't have a summoner in our team or anything. If we did have a summoner, though, he'd be pretty useful, but again, we don't have a summoner, so he doesn't really do much for us. After I got done getting the fourth tablet, I took the third and fourth tablets to the castle and uh, broke the seals on the rest of the legendary weapons, even though, you know, I can't really use them or anything. But uh, I went ahead and broke the rest of the seals on all the legendary weapons, and then uh, I went ahead and saved and quit after that. So yeah, next up, all we have left to do is tackle the void. I also did some more uh, in Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels on the Virtual Console version of it. I uh, remember reading that uh, every time they beat the game, you get a star on the title menu, and you can get up to 24 stars. So I'm going to try doing that now. I'm going to try to get all 24 stars on the title menu. So yeah, I started up another file and uh, went through as Mario. Of course, I did the one-up trick whenever I started up the game and everything. 
And uh, I always enjoy using Mario a little more than using Luigi in uh, Lost Levels, but I do like mixing it up every now and then. I try to do it back and forth, like uh, I did Mario this run, I'll probably use Luigi the next run, and then Mario again, then Luigi again. I'll probably just keep going back and forth, because I don't want to just use one of them all the time. Whatever the case, though, uh, this run was a lot of fun. I guarantee it would have been a lot more frustrating if I didn't do the one-up trick, but uh, I'll learn the game really well eventually, and I won't be using the one-up trick, but until then, I have the funnest time whenever I do use the one-up trick, and I don't have to get mad every time that I die. I kind of like the levels that have the wind. I love, I love that if you die while the wind is blowing you around, you'll uh, get blown to the right as you're dying. Kind of funny looking. But I made my way through the game and everything. I really like this level here where you have to find that hidden vine there, then you climb up in the end of the levels up in the clouds. Kind of cool looking in my opinion. I also like how the entire next level is also staged up in the clouds and everything. Really cool. Thankfully, I had firepower whenever I came up to the fake Bowser, so I took him out really easily. I lost firepower against the real Bowser, though, but that doesn't matter because I was able to run right through him and hit the X and kill off Bowser for good. I only had three lives left whenever I finished off this uh, run of the lost levels. I don't understand it. Whenever I use the one-up trick, it, it's so weird. I never know how many one-ups I have because the life counter that you see between the levels is all glitched. It'll tell me I have WB lives or W9 lives, just stuff like that. And I, I can never know how many lives I have. Sometimes I do the one-up trick and then uh, I die one time and it says that I got a game over. So it's really weird how the one-up trick glitches the game like that. Whatever the case though, I tried my uh, next hand at World 9 again. And I did okay, I suppose. I feel like I kind of got cheated out of my run of World 9. You'll see it here in just a minute. But, uh, I did okay. I, I wasn't expecting to die where I wound up dying at. I swam down near the bottom here, and I, uh, swam over these enemies, and then I got pulled down onto that spiny. Kind of like whenever you're near a pit in underwater stages, you get dragged down. That's what happened to me. I got pulled into that spiny, so I kind of got cheated out of it. But so far, I have three stars on the title menu. I'll get all 24 of them eventually. And yeah, like I said, I'll keep using the 1-Up trick until I know the game well enough. But for now, I have the funnest time whenever I do use the 1-Up trick in the first level of the game. As far as Final Fantasy IV The After Years is concerned, the hunt for the Mind Flayer summon... I'm still not having too good a luck uh, finding that summon. I've still been putting a little bit of time into it each day, but I haven't been having the most luck at getting it. Like I said, though, I will get it eventually. It's just taken forever. But we will get it at some point or another. As far as the run of Super Smash Bros. Melee is concerned, the hunt for 999 coins, I finally got all 999 coins collected again. And for that, I am really happy. It was a lot of fun to put some more time back into Melee, because I had been doing almost nothing but Brawl since Brawl had come out. So it was nice to go back to Melee and uh, use some of the characters that were exclusive to that game and uh, pretty much get back used to the faster pace of uh, fighting that Melee had. If there's anything that I want to see come back from Melee, I want to see uh, the fast gameplay come back. And I want to see Mewtwo and Roy come back. Uh, Roy should be changed up a little bit, kind of like what they did for Falco from uh, Melee to Brawl. And I'd, I'd also like to see uh, Dr. Mario come back as well, but I don't want Dr. Mario to be his own character. I think that he should just be an alternate costume or something. I like the music that plays here in the Foresight stage, but uh, fighting on Foresight is a whole other story. I never cared for fighting on the Foresight stage. It always felt like the platforms were way too small for you to actually get much going on. But uh, Foresight is a pretty uh, cool stage, I suppose. I like the way it looks, I like the music, and hey, another Earthbound stage isn't exactly a bad thing, in my opinion. But they could have made it a little wider for you to have more room to fight with, but uh, whatever. Like I said, though, it was fun to put a little more time back into Melee, because I hadn't uh, played it much since Brawl came out. I think I played it maybe a total of ten times or so since Brawl came out, which really isn't that many, that many uh, playthroughs or whatever. So yeah, like I said, it was really nice to put more time into it, and I'm really glad to have all 999 coins again. I feel like I'm back to 100% completion in this game at last. But, uh, like I said, it was a lot of fun. And uh, the stuff that I mostly want to see come back is a few of the exclusive, exclusive characters in the faster style gameplay, but other than that, I like everything else in Brawl a little bit more. 
So yeah, Melee was a lot of fun to put some more time into. I also did some more gaming with my friend Seth, uh, we did some more Dr. Mario, which is always fun to do. I annihilated him for about an hour straight, and then all of a sudden, just out of nowhere, he managed to destroy me. 22 to nothing, practically. Like I said, I usually end up winning a lot of our matches, but wow, he just kind of pulled out a victory out of nowhere here. He destroyed me. So, kudos to you, Seth. Enjoy it while it lasts, if you're watching. We also did a little bit of uh, gaming in Super Smash Bros. Brawl, but like I've said before, the online for Brawl is just a joke. I really hope that they make uh, the online a lot better in future Smash Bros. We also did a little bit more uh, gaming in Excite Bike World Rally. We're trying to get all the points to get all of our bikes. And uh, me, Seth, and his wife Kaylee also did some uh, gaming in Mario Kart Wii. I'm still practicing around trying to find uh, the carts that I think will be best for me. So far, the two carts that I like the most are the cheap, cheap cart for the lightweight characters and the blooper cart for the midweight characters. Uh, I just now started experimenting with the big, the large weight characters, but the only cart that I've tested so far is the standard large cart. So I still have a few more carts left to check out, but uh, of all the different carts, I like the cheap, cheap and blooper ones the best. I'll decide which one I like more after I've tested through all of them. As far as bikes are concerned, I always use the mock bike. But uh, it was fun to do some gaming with my friend Seth. As far as video game purchases is concerned, I'd like to get my hands on Sonic Generation because I heard that it's a really good game. If I picked it up, I'd end up picking up the 3DS version because that's the only system that I own that the game came out on. But I look forward to getting this at some point or another because I've heard that it's a really good game. Alright, time for the question of the week. This week's question of the week takes us back to the 16-bit era. The question of the week this week is, uh, during the 16-bit console wars, did you take the Super Nintendo side or the Sega Genesis side? So did you prefer playing the Super Nintendo or the Sega Genesis during the 16-bit era? And don't forget that if you'd like to submit your own question of the week, be sure to do it via PM. If you submit your question through a comment, it will not be included in the next Friday's Gamer Log, so be sure to message it to me. So yeah, that's pretty much what I've been up to. Completed uh, Earthbound Zero slash Mother 1 and uh, did some gaming with a friend of mine. Also made uh, some more progress in Final Fantasy V. We should be able to finish the all-color mage run of Final Fantasy V by next Friday's Gamer Log. And I'm especially happy that we got all the coins of Melee at last. But uh, whatever the case, that is it for this Friday's Gamer Log, and I'll see you guys next Friday. Thank you for watching.